I'm gonna teach you how to fish a lipless crankbait. Like literally walk you through how to cast it out, throw it back, wind it. These are uh, if you if you're not if you're kind of uncomfortable fishing crankbaits or any even reaction baits. Period. There's a lot that fishing a lipless crankbait will will teach you. There's uh, all kind of different styles and shapes and colors. They're kind of like uh, they're kind of like matchbox cars. You you get one and you, you find one that's got a little different sound or got a little different shape that you like better. Or one casts a little bit better. Or one makes a little bit more noise or a little less noise. There's there's all kind of different shapes and sizes to use. Um, and they're fun to fish. God, they're fun to fish. The reason being, you know, you can they're easy to cast. You can bomb them a long ways. They are. Uh, when the fish hit them, they, they ride like you ain't no mistaken when you got one of the lipless crankbait. They hit that sucker. So I'm just going to walk you through why, number one, why it's a good bait to teach you how to be a good crankbait fisherman. And uh, I'll just walk you literally through the cast and what I'm looking for when I, when I try to fish a lipless crankbait. All right. That's going to be the objective of today. Getting out here and fishing lipless. 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 Is that how you say lipless? So, your your normal size, <clears throat> honestly, I don't know what size this one is, but they're all about a half ounce. You're, you're, they're typically a quarter, a half, and three quarter ounce. That's typically what you're going to use for bass fishing. Now, depending on the brand, they're going to be a little bit, they're going to vary from that size a little bit. But the profile and the size, no matter what brand you use, is going to be about the same. See, this is the Yoziri that I got out of my Mystery Tackle Box. This is the Catchco Rattlebot. And uh, here's my custom color Hot Wings from the Bill Lewis, the original Rattle Trap. And you see they all, you listen to that, hear how that one sounds versus, hear how that one's a lot quieter. And then, Yoziri is just totally different sound, right? They're all, all three of them got totally different sound. And which one is better? I don't know. You just throw one until you get bit, and then that one's the better one. All right. So they make different sizes, so you have different choices. Is the bottom line. But I'm gonna start with this Yoziri today because it's got a pretty cute color that I feel like for this high bright bluebird day. If you're starting off with colors, basically stick to three three color categories not necessarily three colors shad or translucent all right for your clear water maybe some chromes all right for shad and then you're probably going to want to throw some reds because they like reds that's probably going to get you through just by any situation you want to come across when it comes to this crankbaits as a matter of fact, I thought I was going to throw this. I think I'm going to trade it. I think I'm going to trade it. It doesn't look that good in the water. The best thing you can do, you know, I can make up a whole bunch of reasons why you might want to use this color or that color. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. This is what I do is I'll kind of look down at the water and I'll go, mm, man, yeah, red. Or I'll look down at the water and say, mm, yeah, sexy shad. I could, I could sit here and maybe tell you that, yeah, they were feeding on crawfish. And so I threw a red with a couple gold specks to mimic the golden red crawfish. I mean, eh, sometimes I throw red, man, because I won't throw red. I mean, I don't really have a, that don't really, it, that, so color matters, all right? So don't let anybody tell you that color doesn't matter, but it's just not my number one priority. It 100% does matter what color it is. It's just that. At the end of the day, what color it is, is not my number one. My number one is probably going to be retrieve. Number two is probably going to be profile, what size. And my other number one, <laughs> going back, my other number one is where. Where do I need to throw the freaking thing at? I got two number ones. So where are you throwing it? On point? Pocket? Drains? Grass? Rock? Mud? You know what, what you're fishing it on. If you know where you're fishing it, you're gonna solve. You're gonna solve 80% of your problems, right? 
in my in my opinion, once you know where you're gonna fish it, you're gonna solve almost all your problems. All right. So let's go up here and let's just I'm gonna walk you through a retrieve real quick. Rolling. You look in front of me right here. There's a this is a pocket that splits off two ways. So if you could, you just have to kind of use some imagination with fishing. If you look at this pocket and it splits two ways, there's probably some little depressions where this thing splits off the two ways. Uh, and we, we refer to those, that's a fancy word for saying drain. We say drains or ditches in bass fishing. I like fishing shallow ditches with a, with a lipless crankbait. It's easy. You just kind of get out in front of them and you just start throwing it around until you find out where that shallow or deeper spot is or where there's a little bit more grass, or where there's a little stump row or wh whatever the case may be, you'll throw it out there and you'll and you'll feel around for that. You'll feel the, the trap dredging the bottom or you'll feel it hitting the grass. And you're kind of using it for a search bait. The way I imagine it is if they drain the lake five, six, seven foot, let's say the boat's in eight foot now, if they drained it to seven foot, where would there be water still? And that's where I want to try to put my bait at. So you kind of got to use your imagination. You got electronics, you can use those to figure that out a little bit. You can kind of scan around with your live scope, or you can just use your 2D sonar, or you can just cast around until you notice, ah, I'm not hitting the bottom quite as much anymore. It must be deeper. Or man, I'm really digging the bottom a lot. It must be shallower. And you can kind of graph this out, even with your cast. You can do the same thing as I do with my electronics. You can do it with your cast as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast it out. One, thing, one of the best things about it, you see, I cast it almost to the trees back there. I'll, I could have been squirrel fishing how far I cast it back there. You can cast it a long ways, which is great, because now I can keep my boat back and not spook a group of shallow fish. So that's that's the cool thing about fishing a lipless. So I'm going to make a cast. There's really not a wrong way to fish this thing. The wrong way to fish it is the way that you're not getting bit with it. If you got a partner in the boat and he's wearing them out, he's catching three to one, that's the wrong way to fish it. Fish it like your partner's fishing it. But this is what I'm this is what I'm typically going to do. I got my structure found it, I figured out my little honey hole, or I know where I'm casting, I throw it out there. Alright, this is shallow water. Where I just cast that, it's probably about two foot, three foot. Immediately I'm just gonna start reeling. I'm using a pretty fast reel. This is 7.5 to 1 gear ratio reel. It might be 7.3 to 1, but it's pretty fast. So I don't know, 7.5, 7.3. Throw it out there, I just start reeling. And you notice, see, I, I pump my rod. I pump my rod a little bit because that, that trap is is digging the bottom. And what I, what I like to do, I always say this, no matter if it's flipping soft plastics or if I'm talking about spinner baits, fish always love things that move real fast and stop. They, they move fast and stop. Any kind of crawfish or bait or brim, they always move fast and stop. So you'll notice that I'm pumping the rod tip. I'll make some fast turns and I'll... What is making that trap do, number one, when I, when I give it that pump, it's turning sideways, creating a little extra flash. If I can get the fish's attention, I'm a whole lot more likely to catch the fish. So I'm getting his attention by pumping that rod tip, making the bait turn over on the side and flash a little bit. Secondly, I know I'm fishing in, in fairly shallow water, so I'm probably grassing, grabbing a little bit of muck, leaves, it could be grass, it could be sticks, could be anything on the bottom. And you'll notice when I reel in the rattle trap, you got treble hooks, so you got open hooks. You see how, see how I got this little bit of grass that's attached to the bait? You kind of don't want that, because that's inhibiting the action of the bait. So if you're inhibiting the action of the bait, it's not sounding the way it's supposed to, supposed to and then it's probably like, I can imagine that that's pretty unnatural under the water. I mean, maybe they'll bite it, maybe they won't. I just imagine if it's got a little grass on it, they probably don't like that. So popping that rod tip like that, when I know that I'm just plowing the bottom, it's cleaning off those hooks for me. And you'll notice, you'll feel the bait just kind of not vibrate the way that it's supposed to, and you're just popping that rod tip to, to, uh, to get that off of there. Thirdly, it's just something different. You know, like, especially with the lipless bait, it's, it's a noisy bait. So you, not only do you manipulate the action with the rod tip, you manipulate the sound of the bait with your rod tip. Every time you do something di different with your rod tip, the bait makes more noise or less noise. And of course, with popping it like that, you're getting a quick, <clears throat> like, a, like a, a louder sound, all right? So uh, that's what you're gonna do with it when you're fishing in shallow water. Now, there's a lot of different, you can throw it out and just reel it straight. If I see fish surface feeding, I'll throw it out and I'll just 
heard G Man call it pencil sharp. Now I'll just reel it straight back to the boat. Just have it coming straight through the school of fish, keeping the bait up high in the water column where they're feeding actively. I'll do it that way. But typically, just going down the bank day to day, I'm gonna throw it out. I may let it sink to depth, whatever you want. It's almost like when you're watching a cooking recipe and they say salt to taste. I'm gonna let it sink to taste. Two foot, three foot, five foot, ten foot. So the good thing about lipless, it's a sinking bait, so you can get it wherever you want it to. So just when you make that initial cast, let it sink down and start to reel it. Reel, a couple seconds, pause, let it fall back down. There's nothing better, especially in the fall, letting any kind of bait you got in the fall, try to make it seem like a dying whatever. Thread thin, blueback herring, shad, I don't know, whatever swimming down, around in your waters, sh shrimp, Crabs make it seem like it's dying. And when you do that, that bait's going up and it's just turning over on the side and dying. They like that. They can't stand it. I can't tell you how many bites I've had. Pick up the bait when I go to turn the handle again after I've done this number right here. You let it go back down to the bottom. You pick it up, bop, bop, he's there. So uh, that's why you want to kind of fish it that way. Now, my other way that I like to fish a lipless. I do this a lot of times when I'm fishing around sharp points, points that drop off pretty, you know, pretty drastically, where it may go three foot to 10 foot really quick within a boat length, or bluffy type banks, or the creek turn side banks, is what we'll call yo-yoing. So uh, you almost want to fish it like, a, like you would a, a jig. So I'll throw it out. All right, so this bank right in, let's just pretend it's a little bit steeper than the flat or the ditch that I was just fishing. I'll kind of let it sink down. Maybe we're fishing in six, seven, eight foot of water. Doesn't sound like that's that deep, but to keep a lipless on the, a half ounce lipless on the bottom in seven, eight foot of water, it's not that easy. You might have to downsize your line a little bit. You might have to, uh, to uh, be a little bit more patient. I'm gonna throw it out and I'll just kind of pop it and I'll let it, i wait for that line to go slack. I'll keep it tight. So that way I can watch when it goes slack, I know, that I know it's on the bottom pick up the slack, let it go back down. Extremely good way to fish. It doesn't matter if there's even aquatic vegetation, extremely good way to fish when fish are really lethargic. That fancy word we use for, well, they don't want to bite today. They're just acting stupid. They don't want to bite that good. Or they're, they're down a little deeper and you can't find the, the bait to get down to it. Tie on that lipless, you throw it out, you let it sink. I like to keep my line a little bit tight because when it's a little bit tight, I can watch that bow, especially on a calm day like today. I can, I'll see it just kind of drop. When it drops like it just did, you know it's on the bottom. You, you'll keep it tight, just hold it right there. And see it just hit the bottom line, just, it just kind of laid down on the water. I'll just make two or three quick turns, let it sink back down to the bottom. So what's going on, it seems like I'm moving that bait a lot. You saw all that action in my hand. It looks like I'm doing a lot. I'm really not, the bait's not doing much. It's coming probably a foot off the bottom and gliding back down. Gliding back down to the bottom. Sometimes they just get in a little cavern and they sit on the bottom under a rock. They sit under in a little hole they've got dug out when the water's cold and they really don't want to bite, especially in the winter time. They just sit there. And that's just coming right there. I mean, I might as well eat it. You know, I, mean, I might as well eat it. It's like that little tray of candy that they put at the cash register or at the dentist's office, or I guess they don't put candy at the dentist's office, but at the bank, you know how they put the bag of lollipops? You don't even want a lollipop, but the lollipop is right there. So you get the lollipop. You don't even like lollipops. That's the way it is. You just really, a couple times, it looks like I did a lot. I'm telling you, that bait's not doing that much. If you don't believe me, try it in a pool or somewhere you can actually see it. Really quick, you can even pop it a little bit. Let it fall right back down to the bottom. That's some of the, my, my little tricks to catching fish on a lipless crankbait. You can do this around points. You can do this around steep banks, flats, around grass, uh, whatever you like to fish it around. You can use these couple of retrieval met methods and you're gonna catch fish on it. At some point, you're gonna find a place, you're gonna find a ditch, you're gonna find a grass bed, you're gonna find a bank that's holding a school of fish that like eating lipless baits and you'll catch them on this.